Well, children, if you want to know about chocolate, who would you talk to? <coughs> Jeff? Why Jeff? Coco, yeah. Yeah, good point. Uh, okay, <laughs> very clever, yes, mother. <laughs> um, next minute, someone else is going to start doing this for me. Uh, okay, what if you want to know about horses? What type of a person would you talk to? A horseman, yes. Or if you want to know about cows, who would you talk to? A farmer. A farmer. If you want to know about tractors, who would you talk to? A farmer. Yep. Or maybe a diesel mechanic. Uh, what if you wanted to know about uh, how to run a business? A businessman. Yeah, that's pretty clever. What if you want to know about death? Yes. Why would you ask God? Yes. Now... Can you ask someone on this earth about death? No. Why not? Please put your hand up if you've died before. <laughs> hmm. We haven't got anyone that we can go and talk to about it, can we? Do we? We can't go and talk to like a really old person, even though they know lots about almost everything. Even they don't know anything about dying because they've never died before. But God knows everything about death. And this is actually a wonderful reminder of not just the issue of death and how we deal with it, but everything. You know, there are lots of experts in the world, but the wonderful thing is God has given us instruction on everything necessary for our life and for our salvation. That's what we confess in the Westminster Confession of Faith, that God's given us everything that we need to live faithfully for him and to be saved. He's given us all of it. And so we don't need to freak out and try and find experts who are going to explain to us what dying is like. We can just go to his word and we can read it. And that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to talk about death this morning because do you know what happens to everybody? They end up dying one day. That's right. With the exception of Enoch and Elijah. Everybody dies, unless Jesus comes back first. And so if we're, it's going to happen to us all, we probably should all spend some time thinking about it so we know how to think about it, especially when our loved ones go through it as well. So let's pray and we'll ask God to help us understand. Dear God, we thank you that you are a God who gives us understanding and that you have given us a word which reveals to us even really hard things. And as we turn to your Bible this morning, to think about death, and especially the death of Neil Vincent this morning, we pray that you would give us hearts to understand, minds to accept what you have to say. Lord, we pray that as we deal with these hard things, that you would help these children to put their faith and trust in you throughout all of them. Help us as a family to gather around them and show them the love of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to be turning through to the book of Psalms. We've been working our way through Samuel, but in light of the death of Neil Vinson, I felt it was good to turn and consider something different. So we're going to Psalm 116 today. Psalm 116, we're going to be looking at just verse 15. But in preparation for that, I want us to read the whole chapter. So Psalm 116, and we'll start at verse 1. This is God's word for you today. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul to your rest, 
for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, even when I spoke, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all mankind are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Amen. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word to our heart, soul, and mind. Let's just quickly pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this word. We thank you that you, your word is rich and true, that your word is inerrant, infallible, inspired, that we know it is the word of God and that it contains no errors, that we can trust it, that we can turn to it for help. And God, as we, as we reflect on the death of Neil, we pray that you would give us wisdom we pray that your Holy Spirit would take this verse and press it into our hearts in a powerful way, that we might turn and believe, that we might know that Jesus Christ is Lord, that we might be comforted, that we might be encouraged, that we might be exhorted, that we might be rebuked, that whatever we need, your Spirit would do it. In, enlighten our hearts to see and believe. Illuminate the word so that we might see it truly. But most of all, exalt Jesus Christ. May we see his glory in the preaching of the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Alabama, on Monday at 10.30 p.m., Neil Vinson died. On Monday at 10.30 p.m. in Alabama, his wife and his four children gathered around the bed and sang songs as they watched him pass into darkness. And the Lord declared, it is precious. It is precious. Precious. The death of Neil was precious in the sight of God. The loss of a father, precious. The loss of a husband, precious. The loss of a brother, precious. The loss of a dear friend. And God said, precious. Is this some kind of cruel joke? That, that God would, would look at something of such great sorrow for us. That God would look at something which is seemingly so evil and so wrong, cancer, death, and say it is precious. To me. Who wants a God like that? Maybe you're sitting here today and you're thinking to yourself, why? Why would I want a God who looks at death and says, precious? I don't worship a God like that. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you're wrestling, not, not with the death of Neil, but the death of someone else you love. The death of a parent, 
the death of a sibling, the death of a child. Do you have a God who says, precious? This makes no sense, does it? Well, it only makes sense in light of the New Testament. It only makes sense when you bring the entirety of the New Testament to to bear upon this verse. You see, the, the strange thing about this verse is it's in the middle of a psalm which is all about someone being saved from the dead. Did you pick that up as we read through it? As you read through it, just on and on and on, he is, he is praying for God to deliver him. He's asking the Lord to save him. And as he goes through it, he, he starts saying what he'll do when the Lord saves him. And he starts confessing all that he's going to do at the deliverance of the Lord. And he's delivered. And yet in the midst of this psalm of deliverance, this psalm of the salvation of God for one of his people, He says, precious, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. How can God say that? How can God look at the death of our loved ones and say, it is precious? Well, let's let God himself tell us. Turn with me to the New Testament. I want us to survey, and I want to give you 12 reasons. John, go to John, John chapter 14. I want to give you 12 reasons why God, how God can say that our death, that Neil's death, that your loved one's deaths are precious. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 4. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am, that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going." How can he say that? Because Jesus says, I will take you to be with myself. I will come and collect you. I will bring you home. I am making a mansion for you filled with many rooms. And you will come and sup with me. And we will enjoy eternity together. But then turn to, turn to Romans Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, those very well-known verses right at the end, verse 37 to 39. In all, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. How can he say that? Because death does not separate us from God's love. Isn't it true that in our sight, what does death do? It separates us from our loved ones. It takes them away. We talk about the loss of a loved one, but not in God. God says precious because it does not separate you from him. But it draws you all the nearer. And have a look at Romans 14. Romans 14. Verse 7 to 9. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. 
To this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. In our death, in our death, we are serving God. That's how God can say it. Because in the, in the moment of the death of Neil, he was doing it to the glory and praise of God. And Jesus continues to be the Lord of Neil. You remember where Jesus makes that point where he says, he says, Abraham believed in God. And he says, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. He's talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's the same thing. The Lord is not the Lord of people who stay dead. He is the Lord of the living. He is the Lord of Neil still this day. But have a look in, have a look in verse 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You've probably heard this read at many funerals. Down at the end of the chapter, verse 54. When, when the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ, Neil victored over the grave. That's why God can say, precious, because God has the final laugh, not the grave. Though everyone may die, yet no one stays dead forever. Have a look also at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Starting at verse 1. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, by putting it on, we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as guarantee. God can say precious because because actually what happens in our death is we put away we put away this mortal flesh and become clothed in an eternal flesh we receive our eternal home we receive our eternal homecoming neil has put off a house made by men. But he has put on a house made by God, eternal in the heavens. And have a look. Have a look at verse in chapter, sorry, in the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 19 to 23. I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. Sounds a whole lot like Psalm 116, doesn't it? As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not at all be ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. 
Uh, if I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. Could you imagine, Neil? Oh, it is far better to be with the Lord. Neil will not be sitting in heaven saying, I really wish I could be back on earth again. And that's why God says precious. Because he knows it's for our gain. He knows it's for our best. Number seven, turn to 1 Thessalonians. I said 12, we're up to number seven. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. From verse 13, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as those who do not have a hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. One day, one day a trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend and we will see in his trail, Neil Vinson your parent, your child, your loved one, your cousin, your best friend, you will see them in a train of glory following Christ. And if Lord grants us to be alive, then we will see them with our own eyes and be brought up to them and dwell with them and the Lord forever. This is why it's precious to God. Because he has the future in his sight. Number eight, Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter one, verse ten. Let's start at verse eight. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Who suffered us and who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He abolished death. Well, why is Neil dead? Because what God means by that is that had it not been for the work of Jesus Christ, Neil would be dead and stay dead. But in Christ, in Christ, he will be raised from the dead to newness of life. He will be raised to serve Christ forever. Have a look at verse 9. Sorry. Have a look at chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. This is number 9, I should say. Here's Paul right at the very end of his life. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all 
who have loved his appearing. There is a crown of righteousness waiting. It's a crown. Do you realize you get crowned one day? One day, at the Lord's appearing, you will set eyes upon your king as the consummation of all things come to, together, as everything is, is finally brought together, and a crown of righteousness will be laid upon your head. And you will stand side by side with your loved ones. Dressed in the crown of Christ. Number 10. Turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Revelation, chapter 1, starting at verse 17. <clears throat> When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and Hades. Christ has the keys that unlocks the door to release the dead from their graves. The devil cannot keep you there. Your sin cannot keep you there. For Christ is an all-sufficient Savior. And Christ will take the key and unlock the door and raise the resurrected to life. He will raise the dead to life. And they will boldly walk out and live with him forever. Two more. Number 11. Have a look at Revelation 14. Chapter 14, verse 13. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Neil is finally resting. He is blessed. The reason he died is because his work was done. As, as one Puritan famously put it, we are immortal until our work is done. What did he hear? What did Neil hear? He walked into glory. What did your loved one hear? What did your child hear? What did your parent hear? What did your sibling hear? They walked in and heard, well done, good and faithful servant. Why is it precious? Because God gets to utter those words to them. And he will get to utter them to you and I one day. Number 12, chapter 21 of Revelation. Verse 4. Now let's start at verse 3. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with him, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. Do you know how much it must grieve God to view His created order under the groaning of sin? Remember Revelation. Remember Romans, Romans eight. That this world is is groaning under the weight of sin and the curse. Oh, I tell you, Neil must have done some groaning over the last few months. And some of your loved ones have, have groaned their way into the grave. 
and yet no more. No more. For God, God has taken his spiritual hanky and wiped away every tear from Neil's face. And some of you live in pain. And he says there will be no more pain. Oh, the day when I might stand up and my knees not hurt. Oh, don't you long for that day? Why is it precious? How can it be precious? The reason Psalm 116 verse 15 is precious is because of the person and work of Jesus Christ. Without Christ, without the New Testament, Psalm 116 verse 15 is a mockery of everything we know to be real. But in Christ, it is glorious. In Christ, it is splendid. In Christ, it is filled with hope. In Christ, it has the sun cast upon it and the shadows flee. For Christ is risen. Isn't he? And so will Neil one day. And so will your loved ones. And so will you. Your death will be precious one day. Because in Christ you have newness of life. But who does this promise and comfort come to? Who does this promise and comfort come to? Doesn't God say, he says, the death of a saint. He does not say the death of a human is a precious thing. He says the death of a saint, the death of one who has believed in me, the death of a holy one, the death of one of my children. That is precious to me. My dear, my dear people, we, we love our family and friends and, and we love them so much that we're tempted, we're tempted to, to hold on to them, aren't we? Just, just one more week, just one more month, just one more year. I don't want you to go. Do we love them enough? Do we love them enough to see them go into glory? To see them go into splendor and preciousness with their great God and King. Can we be like Jesus who prayed, Father, this is John 17, Father, I desire that they might be with me where I am. That they might be with me where I am to see my glory. Can you imagine being the disciples in the moment and they hear Jesus say, Father, I want you to take these children and bring them into heaven with me. Can you pray that for your loved one? Can you pray that when cancer presses in? Can you pray that for yourself? Lord, I long to be with you. You know how freeing this can be? Have you ever felt guilty because you long for a loved one to, to actually die? Not because you don't like them, but, but because you see the suffering. And because rightly we don't believe in euthanasia. And you, you watch the elderly and you watched your loved ones. Yeah, you know how freeing it is. You can pray like Jesus and say, Jesus, take Take my mom, take my dad, take my friend, take my brother. Take him, take her to go and see your glory, to go and be with you. This is for the saint, brothers and sisters. We must weep and grieve with all our might. We should have cheeks stained with tears as we see the death of our loved ones, as we grieve with those who grieve. We should be weepers. We should be experts at weeping with those who weep. But we mustn't repine angrily at God. How could you do this? Give him back to me. It is precious. 
It is precious. Rather, as we read in Thessalonians, we should grieve. We should grieve, but not as those without a hope. You ever wondered why so many cultures cut themselves when people die? It's because they have nothing but sorrow, nothing but horror, nothing but regret, nothing but fear, nothing but repining after the death. But that is not us. We have a glorious hope, don't we? We have a living hope. And so we, with, with tear-stained faces, can look at one another and smile with hope. We can be like Christ before the tomb of his friend and weep. And say, one day, that body will come forth. Like David. The boy will not come back to me. But one day, I will go to be with him. And we shouldn't say, we shouldn't say that Neil's life has been cut short. We shouldn't say Neil's life has been cut short. But rather like Sherwood Day, we should say a life abandoned to Christ can never be cut short. Because we fulfill the work of God. Brothers and sisters, this is God's precious gift to us. As as Joel Beakey beautifully put it, our death day is our birthday to glory. Our death day is our birthday to glory. Born again, finally, into glory. It's splendid. Praise the Lord. It's splendid. It's precious to us. You see, because we have the same hope that God puts before us, that the same reasons why God can say precious are the very hope that we have that enables us left behind to grieve our heart out and say precious. Precious in the sight of God and his people. Is the death of Neil, Vincent. Though it hurts like crazy. Your death, my death, Neil's death, our loved one's deaths are precious. How precious. Let me liken it to something. There was a a Hong Kong businessman when I was working in the jewelry store. And so you read about stuff like this when you work with jewelry. There was a Hong Kong businessman who bought his diamond. Sorry. Bought his daughter a diamond. A very rare blue moon diamond. Valued at $48.4 million. The most expensive diamond ever purchased for his eight-year-old daughter. It was very precious, one of a kind, most expensive, outrageous diamond you would ever see. It is absolutely stunning to behold and has absolutely nothing in comparison to the preciousness with which God views our deaths. Who gives a rip about a blue moon diamond compared to eternity? He can have his fancy rock. Just give me Jesus. Oh, how precious it is. But let us not not be like Gollum. Do you remember Gollum in Lord of the Rings? So devoted to the wrong precious that what happened? He got melted in lava. Our preciousness, our precious is not in this world, is it? Our precious is in the life to come, in the world to come. Let us trust ourselves into our good God and Savior, who knows what is for our very best, for the very best of our loved ones. And in closing, let me say one final word. There is a death. There is a death that is not precious to God. Do you know that? 
There is a death that is not precious to God. Ezekiel 18 verse 23 says, Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked? Declares the Lord God. And not rather that he should turn from his way and live. Are you a saint this morning? Because if you are not a saint this morning, clothed in the righteousness of Christ, your death is not precious. It is horrible. And God finds no pleasure in it. He will not look at your death if you are not a saint. He will not look at your death and say, well done, good and faithful servant. How blessed are the dead. How good it is that they be raised from the dead because you will be raised from the dead and you will go to hell. It is that serious. Oh, I long for you to know the hope of having a precious death. Put your trust in Christ. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Turn and live. Turn and live. Will you turn and live before it's too late? Before your death is nothing but a grievous horror. Christ offers you a precious death today. An eternal glory. One which we would all celebrate in. Don't you love a good Christian funeral? Will you celebrate the goodness of God for the living and the dead? May that be true for you. May it be true for every one of you in this room and every person tuning in on the internet. Look to Christ, brothers and sisters. There is our hope found. Amen? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ who has been raised from the dead, who has ascended to the right hand of your throne and who is King of kings and Lord of lords in glory. And we thank you that in Christ we are new creations and in Christ we have life. We thank you, Lord, for the life of Neil. And we thank you for his death, that it is precious in your sight. May we rejoice in the Lord always. I pray, Lord, for the people here today whose death would not be precious in your sight. God, I pray that right now your spirit would enter their heart. That right now you would cause trouble in their heart that they may leave here today contemplating their death and finding hope in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.